So we're drawing a new triangle now. It's not right angled, but this way, this result I'm about to show you, I'm going to prove to you, we can all be on the same page, literally. Okay? Now I've labeled my triangle A, B, C. I have this altitude in here, right? And it connects, I'll just call this point X, right? Where that altitude, that perpendicular height is. Okay? Now it's just a bit of a convention, just so we don't get confused. To have, like, see how I've got three angles labeled in? Angle A, B, A, C, angle B, A, B, C, and angle C, right? I want to talk about the relationship between the angles and the sides that are opposite them, right? So see how this one is capital A? I'm going to call the side that's opposite lowercase a, okay? And this side, this angle is capital B, so I'm going to call the side opposite it lowercase b, okay? That would mean, if I was following the pattern, that this guy down here should be, I guess we just call it lowercase c. Okay, so are you happy with that? All right, now there's one last length we need, um, this intermediary length that we've introduced, this perpendicular height, okay, the altitude. Since it's a height, I'm going to call it h for height, because I haven't used h yet. Now that we have all of these in place, I want to try and use this pair of right angle triangles because I can do trig in right angle triangles. Okay? So here's where I'm going to start. This left hand triangle over here, I'm just going to outline it in red so you can see the one I'm talking about. This one here. What's the name of this triangle? A -C. It's um, ACX, okay? in triangle ACX. Right? You notice that it's a right angle triangle. I have a right angle here, which means I have to have a right angle here. You okay with that? All right. So in this triangle, because it's right angled, I can say sine, cos, tan. I can use my soccer toe business, opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent, all that. Right? For reasons that will become clear in a second, I'm going to say sine of this angle in the corner. Right? Sine of CAX. Okay. Right, think, think, Sokotar opposite on hypotenuse. What's sine CAX going to be equal to based on the length that I've named? It's going to be opposite on hypotenuse. That's H over B, right? So I have this, okay? So that's fine, right? Now, if I have a look at the next triangle over, the right-hand triangle, I can say, well, what's that triangle for? CXB. Uh, CXB, or in alphabetical order, doesn't really matter. I'm going to call it B, C, X. Like, the order doesn't matter, but I just tend to put things alphabetical. I can do a similar kind of thing, right? I can do sine of this angle over here in the corner, C, B, X. And I should be able to pull off the same trick, because it's also right angle, right? Here's the angle. Which one's the opposite side? It's H again, isn't it, right? And this is why I'm using sine, because I want to get rid of this H. It's H over A, that's the hypotenuse, H <coughs> over A. Okay, now, look at this, right? I've got a pair of um, equations, right? And they both have the same H in them, right? I want to make this really obvious, okay? So I'm going to make H the subject of each of these equations, okay? So in this top equation, I have to multiply both top and bottom, sorry, both left and right by B. You see that? So I'm going to end up with B times this, right? But just to abbreviate a little bit, C A, sorry, C A X. It's just this angle over here. It's angle A, isn't it? There's no other angle that's called A in my diagram. Okay? So I'm going to call that sine A. Alright? You guys know usually it's kind of a bad idea to just call it by one letter because it might be a different, there might be a different angle that refers to that. But look, in this particular diagram, there's no ambiguity as to what it can be. There's only one angle where A is at the heart of it. In the same way, how would I write a similar equation for the second one? What would h equal in this case? A sine Yeah, very good. I'm multiplying left and right by a, which gets rid of it on the denominator and pops it over here with the sine. So it's going to become a sine, and b is the heart of that angle. Okay. Now, if h is equal to that top thing, and h is also equal to this bottom thing, then these two should be equal, right? If they're both h then these two should be equal to each other, right? So therefore, that's what I'm going to say, okay? I'm going to say, therefore, B sine A equals A sine B, okay? 
Now, one step away from what we call the sign rule, okay? To make this nice and neat, remember the whole idea was, coming back to this triangle, an angle should be paired up with its opposite side. An angle should be paired up with its opposite side. Right now I have them mismatched. I've got the B's and A's together and the A's and B's. So I'm going to rearrange things. I'm going to divide the left and the right hand side by, I'm going to divide both sides by sine A, sine B. That's what I want to do, okay? So let's quickly do that, right? If I divide this by sine A, sine B, then I'll do this to the same, do the same operation to the right hand side. Okay, now a whole bunch of things can cancel, right? What can I cancel on the left? Sine. Sine A, right? Bam, bam, it's gone. Over here, I can cancel the sine B, right? Bam, bam, it's done, okay? So now let's just rewrite this in kind of nice, neat terms, right? I'll do it in order, I'll do the A's first. A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. Now, I did this with a pair of triangles. Uh, a triangle with A in it and a triangle with B in it. Had I drawn a different altitude, I could have drawn the altitude off that way or off this way. I could have had the triangle with C in it, right? So this is what we call a symmetrical result. This is also equal to this. I could just go through this entire process again, which we don't need to do, because it's going to literally look exactly the same, except there will be C's instead of A's, right? And I'm going to show that these relationships are all equal to each other, right? When you compare a side with the angle opposite, that should be the same as another, si another side and the angle opposite it, and the last side and its angle opposite it. This guy here is what we call the sine rule, right? It's our symbolic uh, trigonometric way of saying this, right? Big sides go with big angles, right? If this guy's big, then this guy will be big as well. And little sides go with little angles. If this one's small, then this one will be small, okay? And that's just saying, in an equation, what this is saying in words. Okay? I've said this before when we were doing 3D trig, right? They give you diagrams, but I think it's so much to your advantage to just draw yourself up a quick one. That took me all of like, you know, 10, 15 seconds. And what I can do now is I can write all over it. I can show relationships by drawing on this thing. I think that's really useful, okay? So this sine rule is about matching angles with their opposite sides, or sides with their opposite angles. So I'm gonna show those relationships on here, right? A, the side I want to find out, is opposite 73. You see that? And the side I know, 12.3, it's opposite that 35 degree angle there. Okay? Um, mismatching those opposite angles and sides is often what trips people up in this. So that's why I go to the effort of drawing them there. So now that I know what matches, I'm going to write the sine rule for this triangle. Right? I want to find A, so I'll write that first. What's the angle opposite A? 73. So A on sine 73. That'll be equal to another side divided by the sine of its opposite angle. So I'll go 12.3 <coughs> divided by sine 35. Okay. So this, this is easy. This is just mince made for our calculator, right? I'll just rearrange it before I enter it. I'll put that sine 73 on the right hand side. By the way, quick question. When I move it over to the right, why is it now on the numerator, not the denominator? Why is that? Because, what, what did I do? What did I do? From, yeah, from this line to this line, I multiplied. Right? I multiplied both sides by sine 73. That got rid of it on the denominator, but it placed it up here in the numerator. Okay, this guy, just throw it into your calculator for me. Someone already got an answer. Let's go one decimal place. 20.5. 20.5? Can I get some agreement? Yeah. Yes? No? Yes? Okay, now, before I sign off on this and say, does it have units? Mm, nope. Okay. Um, before I sign off on this and say, yeah, I think I have the right answer. Does it make sense? Here's the first thing I'm going to say. 20.5, is that like in the same ballpark as this distance here? And the answer is, yes, it is, right? If I'd gotten something like 2,000 over here, I'd be like, mm, I think something's gone wrong. Okay, I've maybe punched something wrong my calculator. Secondly, does it match up what we were expecting before, right? Big angles ought to equate to big sides and vice versa. Yeah. Is this longer than this? And it is, right? And it is roughly, like roughly twice as long than this, and the angle is roughly twice as big as this. 
it checks out, I'm done. Okay? 